Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. So I've been reading how to make smart notes and it's very paper-based. And the first question that comes into my mind then is, hey, how can I implement this in a digital system like LogSeq? And while reading this book, I realized that notes and tasks are similar, but also a bit like a yin and yang towards each other. Because when you talk about big tasks, you break them down into smaller tasks so that you can get a larger project done. And notes seems to be the opposite. You have a lot of small thoughts and then you combine those into like a bigger document or knowledge base that you can use to create bigger things. Now I've been testing a workflow and I've been using LogSeq more and more. It helped a bit that I was going up and down to Berlin, which means six hours in a train there, six hours in a train back. So I had plenty of time to type things on my laptop where I combine capture, organize and build to use LogSeq and Notes to the fullest extent. So the first change that I made was bigger buckets. Now the difference between a hierarchy system like something like Notion or Evernote is that you already have to think about where to put everything inside the structure. But with something like LogSeq, but also other linked systems like Rome and Obsidian, it's so easy just to link to a new page and then refer to those things. But the problem that you have there is once you start diversing that out, you have like a hundred bins to search through and it's not actually helping you collecting those notes at a later date. So I had to start thinking, how can I combine those into one set? Now I made a quick change for that. One of the things that I did was saying like, hey, I'm gonna use a folder structure inside LogSeq and I'm gonna show that to you where I say like, hey, I put everything under topic and then make like topics and subtopics and maybe sub subtopics, but I should try to avoid that. I mean, the more things I combine into one topic, the more information will be available to me. Luckily, because you can easily rename and merge pages, I can just grow this over time. So even if I make too many topics, I can always combine them and then go through the process of cleaning those up again. And as you can see here, um, I've got this small structure and the biggest one for me right now is note taking because that's the one that I used as a core for this video. And then the difference is mostly inside the topic because if I go into this set, then we look down and we see that it's like 72 linked references, meaning that it's small thoughts and notes that I put in there. And we'll get to how I organize those later. Now, one of the quotes from the book was the writer asks, how will I stumble upon this note even if I totally forget about it? And that really resonated with me because that's a bit how it is. I don't remember all the notes and all the thoughts that I've taken. I just group them together and then basically mentally go through it and see like, hey, how am I gonna see this later down the line? One of the best ways is by grouping those things into a topic because then when I reread the topic, all those thoughts pop up even for a short while and I can combine those and get to like a conclusion on it or new thoughts and that makes more notes and so the thing snowballs out of control. Now I combined this thought process with some of the notes that I had from building a second brain and that is to capture less. So you decide what to capture and one of the things that I do is I still capture a lot, but it goes into a two phase. So first of all, I just chuck things in my journal. Don't think about it, chuck it there. Or it goes from my inbox in Todoist if I'm not behind my system and I wanna have like a, the quickest way possible to get a fault out of my head and think about it later. And then once I get to like the thinking modus and I try to do this like a couple of times a day, uh, it doesn't work. If like. I put stuff in there, like the short, what I call fleeting nodes in the book, and I wait a couple of days, then you lose whatever you were thinking about. So you have to process this on like a daily basis, preferably a couple of times per day if you have them. And then what I do is I look at the fleeting note that I made, like a link to a tweet, an article, some thought I had, and I turn that into a sentence. And the sentence is important because current me knows everything about this, knows about this thought, but future me, the boss that's gonna make the video in like two months, doesn't. And that's a mistake that I've made over and over again where I look at my notes and go like, who wrote this? Like what drunk mode was I in when I put this <laughs> down to paper? So by taking a little bit more time and writing it down into like this small chunk of information, another thing that I do is I don't really save quotes. Well, maybe, but very rarely, I save thoughts. So any thought that I have on an article, that's what I write down. And then I link it to topics. I might link it to a couple of other pages that are related. For example, LogSeq isn't a topic in itself, but an application. Um, and then 
work from that by adding information to it. Another thing that I tend to do is highlight a couple of keywords so that I can quickly look at a block of text and say like, okay, that's the topic that I was discussing there. And this allows future me to work better. And this is the effort I'm gonna take. I'm gonna limit myself. Like I'm not gonna try and perfectly organize all these notes. Nobody got time for that. And you don't wanna spend all the time because you don't know which thought will be extremely valuable when you write it down and which one will be just in your system forever and never touched. So what I do is I make sure that that note can stand on itself, is linked to a couple of topics, and then I forget about them. Now that you have everything captured, it becomes time to organize your notes. And my main advice is there, don't do it. And the reason I mean that is not that you shouldn't organize your notes, but you shouldn't organize your notes when you're not going to use them right away. That's a waste of time. The notes are already captured, the thing is in there. Everything that was in your head is already written down. Organizing notes should be done just before you're actually going to use it to make sure that you don't waste any time going through your notes. You might do it as a fun exercise when you get some spare time, but the best time to do it is just in time. So when reading the book, they talk about slip notes and the idea is that you make like small notes, like the thoughts that I wrote down in my journal, and that you then put them into like this large set where you put them after each other and make sure that they're related to each other. So there's like a certain order to it. And that sounds great on paper, but how do I reflect that into Logseek? And I found a really fast way to do that. And Logseek actually is very suited towards it. So let me demo that for you. Now, the trick that I do is I use embed blocks. So if you look at my uh, personal acknowledgement notes and I see an alias here, so this says topic productivity note taking, and there's a couple of like quick notes on the top from me, but most of the notes that are on it are these. These are my slip notes and they're just block embed. So if I go here and I go up, then you should see that it's an embed for a block. And the reason why I do that is I'm no longer typing things over. What I do is I go to the references down let me scroll all the way there and go through those, make a selection here, say like, okay, I think this part is important. Press Control E and Control E copies of block embed and then go up to my slip notes and figure out where in the hierarchy does it fit. This is a game changer for me. Like the things that I've done with this is because you take a note and then you go through your notes and find out where they fit you start grouping notes. So for example, I have a group note here, which says like, hey, you should limit the amount of subdirectories. And then I found this one, the writer asks, under which circumstances do I find it? And that's then related to that note. So I start making this stack of related notes, anything like this is where to put my thoughts, starts to get grouped and put each other. So I'm using outline and outline and using embed. So it's like meta all the way down in Logseek, which I absolutely love. With the only thing that I manually add now is headings. So the headings are usually when I said like, okay, this is like a group of notes and I think those should be together. And then the headings help me to quickly skim through those notes and find the solution. But by grouping these, I see when I have duplicate notes, when things are related to each other, I might have new thoughts because I read that section. And that helps like a lot, like it helps putting stuff down, but also because I'm not retyping it, I'm not thinking, I'm just copying blocks, chucking them together like Lego bricks. And I can do this organizing in, depending on the amount of notes, but per note, it takes about 10, 20 seconds. So if you get like 50 notes, like I got there, like half an hour, you get everything organized and sorted. If you use the highlighting method that I mentioned in Capture so that you can quickly see what a note was about, then it even goes faster than that. And the end result is a page that has the notes in a logical order. And then not the time order as you put it in your journal, but the logical order as in, hey, this was like the most important part of the notes, this is related to it, and these combined faults are together, but still part of this topic. And this is saving me a lot of time, but also making me rethink about the notes that I do and because it's so fast, I can do it just before I need them. Now, another cool thing that I like is because these are not specific pieces of text, but part of your journal, if I use them on multiple places, for example, if I've got multiple topics that are related to it, then I'm only changing this at one. This is Loxy, I, I can make changes here and the change that like, let me show you. Like if I make a change to this part, it will change the journal entry. So if I use the same block in other slip notes for other topics 
and I update this or add extra information to it, that extra information will automatically appear in the other slip notes that I have related to the topic and probably the same subsection. So I'm actually saving myself some work when I'm thinking and I'm adding them into this. So I don't add text around this. I update the text in the journal from the date that I made it, sometimes with an extra note. Like if it's just a fine tuning, I don't really care about it. If it's like a really new thought, I might make it in the journal and then reference it inside the journal where I originally made it, making them like even more intertwined and linked. So another thing that I really like about the fact that these things are related notes is that the blocks that I have here are only there once. They're in the journal that I made them. So if I click on this, like where I related the slip notes, and I click on that, I know I made this note on January the 2nd, and I can see that I was note taking on slip notes, and it was late in the day because I use interstitial journaling. But I can also see here that I used this like on multiple places. So I refer to this block in uh, the, the book itself, and I refer to this block in PKM. And if I make any changes to this specific piece of text, it will be updated in both places where I reference that block. I also know that I've already been using it. So that's also a benefit that I'm having. Um, if I go back to this and I'm going through like this list in the bottom, normally I would filter and you can still do that. If you want to have like perfect knowing that you did something with every note, then you might want to go through it and specifically put them somewhere. But I like the fact that just knowing that this one is there probably means I already put it in the slip note system somewhere. And if I'm in doubt, I can always click on it and then figure out where did I put them in the slip notes. This way, my notes like basically organize themselves. The only thing that I have to do is like the smart thinking, which is how is this note related to my other notes? Loxy take care of the rest. So then we get to building because Getting all these collected notes, organizing them is only one part of the section. What you need is to produce something with it. And a lot of people think that is a content creator kind of game. Like, hey, you have to make a blog post or you have to make a video from it. And of course, you know, that's the example I'm going to use because I'm a YouTuber, so I make a lot of these videos. But it's not just those. It's also writing large documents with lots of related information that you have to collect. Uh, I love collecting information on people that I talk to, like what topics were they interested in and then do research on that, come back with notes. And then when I talk to them, I can skim through my organized notes to figure out like, oh yeah, this is the thing that we want to talk about or go more in depth. Uh, I've got, you know, of course, book notes, I don't do a lot with it, but I also get like recaps, flashcards. There's a lot of things that you can do with the notes that you have. In this case, I'm just going to produce like a video and I'm going to make this real meta by showing you the actual script that I made for this video. So let me switch to Loxic and show you then how I did that. So we have here the how to take notes slip note method video and there's a lot of aliases and types in it. So there's a video and there's a channel and there's information. And here's the outline, it's the thing we're talking about. We scroll down and we go full into the meta. Then you see here that I'm actually talking about like, hey, uh, this is how we're talking about and we're gonna start a page and pick topics. And this is how I built. So I start a page like this make it all blank uh, and then pick a couple topics. So I said note taking and I said note taking structure. Those are the topics that I wanna talk about. And then if I'm building this page, what I do is I shift click on the topic. So I get this on the side and I have my slip notes here and I can just you know browse through that, take it. And then I take elements from those and I do again the uh, control E or control V. I usually use control V here because I don't need the full text. I just wanna have the link to the original source. But what you see is I've opened this, for example, this is then a link to the fault that I had about that task management is yin and yang, which I talked about in the beginning of the video. So that links back to some of the notes that are here. And then I usually, after I made this quick list of all these individual thoughts that I had in the order that I wanna present them in the video, then I go through it and I optimize it. So I take those notes and I move them down the level and put an outline on top of them. So in this case, it's just the scene number, like in this case, 1B, and a short summary of the notes that I have under it. Because when I'm recording, I am not gonna read all these notes all the time. I don't want to read all these notes all the time. I just need a quick reminder about what thought space I was in while I was doing that. And by doing so, I have a quick capture as in one line and it's all folded in and I can quickly go through it. So like, um, let me show you. Because in the background, this is like how I'm really recording. The list is on the side. I do some uh, research if I need to find something on the left. 
and it's small and quickly to access. And then when I'm demoing it, like I use like a different LogSeq window with a bigger font, so it's easier to read when you're on your mobile, for example. Putting those notes under each other means that I have like the reference right there. I can shift click on it and read the details and find the information. And then I just, on top of that, make headings and that say like, this is what you wanna talk about. And if I get lost anywhere, you know, during making the video, I just open it and I can follow the links all the way down until I get to like the related information that I need to finish up this video. Making this works for everything. I use it now for an outline for a video, but I can do the same thing for a blog post where I just start a new page, say this is a blog post. I collect tidbits from the related topic that I have, chuck them together, and then use that as a base to start writing the full document out and turning that into a block. If that works in practice, you'll have to find out in the future because I've mostly been focusing on building this studio and making these videos, but I'm planning on using the same system to make a couple more blog posts like the last past one I did on my website. Be sure to, you know, add the RSS feed into your feed reader. If you're using the one from Readwise, I highly recommend it. I love their reader setup because it combines everything and it syncs to LogSeq. Now some final thoughts, and that is that using the system really started to accelerate using LogSeq for me. I mean, LogSeq was already like a big part of my whole life. I mean, I'm running a YouTube channel about it. Um, but I've also started to notice that I'm moving LogSeq more and more from the right side where it was like this note-taking thing, more to like the center of my workspace. So now the browser is moving to the side, that's the side thing. And then the note-taking is becoming more and more the centerpiece of my day. It's the place where I put my thoughts, work them out, and then slowly turn them into what I wanna produce. And that's like a, a total shift. It's not no longer just a search engine database thing, but it's starting to become a place of real thinking. And that's of course, what this is about. It's a thinking tool. So by going through all the thoughts that I had in the history, and I basically drag them into my mental scape and know how they are related, I can think of new thoughts and related thoughts to those things and start building out. And I've seen those relationships happen with this slip note method inside of LogSeq. Also because I'm no longer rewriting all this stuff, but just using the console E to copy and embed and put them somewhere, I can work much faster when I'm organizing my notes because I usually get stuck when I'm doing the whole uh, writing thing. It's also one of the reasons why I'm glad with something like AI, not because I think it should write my stuff for me, but because, because my, <laughs> Mine is just this huge chaos and I can ramble against this machine and then it will tell me my key highlights and then I can turn that into actual content. Use it as a tool, people. I mean, it's not gonna replace us right now, but you know, dystopian futures for the win. Remember, you're awesome, keep it up.